we have 15 things that would make Max better. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so you're watching this video. I'm guessing that you love Max. We all love Max, right? Except for a couple trolls over there. You can't stop them. You can never stop them. Anyways, Max keep getting better, faster, stronger every single day. What is there not to love? Believe it or not, I found 15. So in this video, and it's going to be in no particular order, I'm going to list 15 different things that Apple can do to their Mac computers to make them better. Oh yeah, and I'm going to be covering Apple laptops and the desktop. So this list is going to be intertwined in there. And uh, go ahead and I'm going to go through them quickly, but go ahead and post in the comments which which are the ones I missed. Did I miss any glaring ones, any big ones? I want to hear what people think out there. I think my list is pretty good. You tell me though, what did I miss? Okay, let's get into the list. Number one, user upgradability. I guess that's a word, right? Anyways, Upgrading your Mac. I think that's one of the biggest ones out there. Again, this is no particular order, but you post in the comments. That would be huge for Apple. But the question is, would you take a thicker laptop if you could upgrade things on it? Would that be worth it to you? Would Apple be the same company it is without that design, right? So obviously, it's not just an Apple problem now. A lot of the Snapdragon computers and things like that are going the same direction where they're basically gluing everything into the, the chassis there, and you can't really change anything out. I don't totally agree with it. There's ways around it, like with the Mac Minis over there. Now you can actually put in SSDs and stuff, but it's kind of kludgy a lot of times. Post in the comments, is that the number one thing that you'd want to see change? Just curious. I think that's probably the number one, even though, again, no order here. Upgradability. Okay, number two, and what they could actually do better, Apple, screens. And they have some of the best screens, mind you, obviously, at any laptop out there. that They're, they're perfect almost, but there's a couple things they could do. OLEDs for number one, and I think that's coming. I think next year or the year after, it's going to, we're going to see some OLEDs, so that'll be solved there. And number two on the kind of, this is still number two, touch screens. Now, me personally, I hate touching my Apple screen. I hate having fingerprints all over my screen. That's what my I iPad's for. But you post in the comments. I know, I just want to see what percentage of people want them versus not want them. I'm guessing it's about 50-50 or it's probably less than that because Apple's probably doing some research on that with Apple customers. But I think touch screen and OLED on the screens. Other than that, I mean, right now, they're still one of the best screens out there. So you can't complain. Okay, number three, this is not a big one, but it's adding an SD card reader to the MacBook Air and maybe the Mac Mini. I hear this all the time, so you don't think it's a big issue, but I get so many comments on that. People want to see the SD card reader on all the laptops. A lot of people don't even use them. Um, other people say maybe USB-A, so maybe reworking the ports. I do think the MacBook Pros have really good ports. I think the Mac Mini does, except for the SD card reader. I think the Studio does. I think the errors are lacking a little bit, the MacBook Airs. So let's just work on some of the ports. Listen to people what they want. Add some of the ports. Who cares if it adds a little bit of design glitch on the side of the thing? People want those ports. It's going to be ports. Okay, number four, and remember, this is going to be both desktop and laptops. This is kind of one that kind of has always been at the back of my head. Bring back target display mode, all right, on IMAX. That would be huge for a lot of people. I have an IMAX sitting right here. It's hard. You can use it, obviously, different ways. There's different ways to kind of get around using this as an external screen, but it's not easy and it's not perfect. There's always some lag and stuff. If Apple would do that, first of all, they would sell so many of these things, it would be incredible. And plus, why not? Why would you want to penalize your own customers for something like this? You're buying a pretty expensive computer. Why would you want to do that, especially when you don't even offer that many screens yourself? So I think bringing back target display mode would bring back, you know, the essence of the iMac, which is really what started, you know, the Mac design craze and stuff like that. I think they owe it to this thing to do it. Okay, this brings me to number five, which is kind of similar to number four, but it's basically bringing back more options for your desktop for monitors, more monitor options for your desktops, all right? Right now we just have a $5,000 or $6,000 6K monitor Apple offers. We have the studio display that's around 1600 bucks. That's 5K. We want to have a monitor. They need to make more monitors for people in the price range of around, even if it was $799. $799 for a 5K monitor at 27 inch. We also would love a 32 inch. 6K monitor for under two grand, but they need to give us more options and more affordable options there because it's left us to go ahead and get 4K monitors. The text doesn't really render clear all the time on those. And everyone's always complaining about that. Just make one. How hard is it to make a monitor? Everyone else is doing it. Do it. Put the price somewhere around $899, $799 for a 5K 27 inch case closed. They need to do it. They need to listen to people out there. Everyone's asking for it. Okay, number six. 
it's going to be probably my most requested one here that I get on the channel in the comments. It's going to be cheaper upgrades to both RAM and SSD storage on all Apple devices. Right now, they're, they're charging basically $200 for each upgrade. It's totally insane. Obviously, we know that. If you want to get like four terabytes on a laptop, you have to basically, you know, take another mortgage out on your house. It's ridiculous, right? We have to look for other external drives. We have to look for other options, opening up the Mac Mini and doing it ourselves and voiding the warranties. So go ahead and fix that. Even if it was $100, I think it would solve a lot of things. It should really be about $75 for each upgrade. But let's work on this Apple. I think that's the number six here is one of the big ones. Okay, number seven is maybe something that a lot of people don't think about. But over here, cheaper iCloud storage. So if you look in here, the storage for iCloud, two terabytes is roughly about $10 per month. That's $120 per year. You can buy a two terabyte drive here for probably 99 bucks from you know somewhere like Best Buy or something, right? So you can go ahead and store your own stuff. So they're charging that. But if you go, let's say you're doing this for five years, that's five or $600 you're spending. We need cheaper iCloud storage. If we look at this price here, just cut this in half, make this about five bucks for two terabytes. I think that would be fair for everybody. You got to make things fair if you want people to move over to that, right? And I think this pricing is still too high for us. So just make iCloud storage a little bit cheaper and that'll slash off that one. Okay, number eight. We hear this all the time as well. We talked about the iMac before. Let's get a 32 inch iMac, right? Or a 30 inch iMac or something bigger than 27 inch. Everyone loves these things. Nobody really buys them because they're a little bit too small right now. And everyone used to buy the 32 or the 27 inch actually, obviously. And they don't even make a 27 inch, they make a 24 inch. So it makes no sense to me why you're gonna be offering this, you know, without changing over to a 27 inch. You'd think it would be super simple to do that. They already have kind of the guts. They already have everything built into this thing. They just gotta just ramp it up a little bit. So I think that's a big one a lot of people ask about. Just make this thing, you know, 32 inches and just let's be done with it. And we'll even take 27. Okay, number nine is a big one. It's gonna be more integration and better integration with game developers and also cheaper games. So long story short, it's kind of a catch-22 where a lot of game developers don't develop for Apple because obviously, you know, they just there's not a lot of people buying them because the games are so expensive. It's kind of this cycle. We know that something like the Mac Studio with the, you know, the M4 Max, all those GPU cores can play with high frame rates games if it's optimized for the Mac, but they're not doing it. It's kind of the same catch as the Vision Pro, right? Like no, nobody's really developing for it because nobody's buying it. This is the same thing here with gaming. Apple has so much money they could buy a country, but yet they refuse to actually, you know, spend some money, lose some money and get game developers in. Set them up, give them a house. I don't care. Get them to start working on games for Apple. It's a big one. Okay, number 10, like I said, these are all small and big, is going to be, can Apple design a better mouse? I don't actually have it sitting here. I have it in my closet for the exact reason I hate it, all right? The magic mouse. Can Apple make a mouse more like the MX Master or something like that? Or are they afraid of getting sued or something? I have no idea. In fact, just buy MX Master for all I care and make it an Apple mouse, right? Start shipping better you know, mice with your systems, especially on desktops, obviously, and stuff like that, and we'll start using them. Oh yeah, and I actually particularly like the keyboard, these really flat keyboards, but why hasn't Apple made like a mechanical keyboard yet? I mean, they have all these engineers. It's not that difficult. We see small companies do it all the time. Give us the option of having a flat keyboard or a mechanical keyboard, make it really good, and let's move on. Okay, number 12, and I think the first one's going away, but it's gonna be remove the notch on your laptops. I think that's gonna be coming here, obviously. And then the next one is Face ID on your Mac computer, right? So why, why do we have to use our fingerprint in this 2025 when Windows has been doing this forever? Give us Face ID. There's absolutely no reason you can. I know they're saying like, obviously there's not enough room in the uh, you know the, the monitors and stuff on the laptops. That's, you know, why, why can Windows PCs or Windows laptops do that? It makes no sense, right? So give us that. I mean, if you guys can't even get the engineers in there, start hiring people that you need to do it. We all want that. Let's just get done with it. Okay, number 13 is going to be higher quality webcams. I mean, I have an iMac setting right here. I can record videos or different angles from this thing. If it had a better webcam, even on, you know, laptops and stuff like that. Now, they're getting better, obviously, every single day, kind of. Although some iterations, you see them kind of, people are like, is it better? Is it not better? It should just be monumentally better every time they come out with a new computer, right? You would think that. I've seen little ones from, you know, the middle of China that have no names on them better than Apple's, you know, basically lap, or their, their little uh, cameras up here. So why can't they do it? Again, a huge company with more money than the world, and they can't even figure that out. That's one thing, you know, they should do right away. It's not a huge thing, but I think it would help people that are just, won't even want to get into what I do here, be able to film, and they should be able to do it very easily. 
Okay, number 14 is kind of one of these things that's starting to change. It's gonna be affordability. So before they weren't even affordable for a lot of people, Apple computers, so we always stayed as a small percentage of the users out there. Like I said, with game development and stuff like that, that's a big thing because if a lot of people can't afford Apple computers all around the world, they, they don't want them for gaming, obviously. They can't even afford them anyway. But Apple's getting better with it. We saw the 799 MacBook Air with the M4 chip, the 599 or 499 sometimes Mac Mini over there. And you can get those things. Those are incredible values. But at the same time, they kind of screw you on the storage again. So you got to spend 200 bucks. So realistically, you don't get them for that cost. They're usually 200 bucks more. And uh, But I think affordability on getting some of the mid-range systems or high-range systems coming down because that'll get, you know, those are the games, the systems that you need to game on. And once people, more people get those systems, then obviously more people will buy games that'll work. And the example is, is like they could they could totally optimize a game for a, you know a Mac computer, but most people buy Airs over here, and if the Airs can't play them, then obviously you're dead in the water because most people aren't buying four thousand dollar computers. So the affordability they have to get down, and they can do it because if they get gaming and things like that and all these other things I'm talking about in there, more people will buy them, and they'll make even more money even at a lower cost. Okay, number 15, this is the last one that I could think of. It's going to be better AI, I guess, that's coming out here. We've seen that they failed in many, many ways here. And uh, I just say, like, you know, we've heard all this drama about all the ways that Apple's kind of trying to fix this and what have you. But I just say work with the company. I think that's what they're doing. I think they're going the Google, Google route right now. They're going to start kind of forming a partnership with them. Those companies have already figured it out, and uh, Apple keeps getting their people taken away from them. So I just think, just go ahead and solve this so we can actually take a breath, rest, and we, you know, we don't hear this every single day on how bad the AI is. Just fix it. We want the security. I understand that, and that's obviously very important. So you got to work on that at the same time. But you've had time. You just missed the boat. Come out, you know, be honest, and just tell everyone you're going to buy. You know, you're going to work with one of these big companies. And that's what you want to do. So I think that'll solve it. But we just need to get better AI. Series terrible. It's always been. Get that to be one of the best in the industry. Make everyone else envy you. And uh, that's going to really help the brand. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. But, you know, I think, you know, I love Apple computers. Just, I mean, I'm, this is not, I'm not complaining about all this stuff. I think this would just make Apple computers better. I mean, what do you guys think? So post in the comments, did I miss some big glaring thing out there? Or did I get most of them correct here? I mean, when you start thinking about all this stuff, I mean, obviously, nothing's going to be perfect. And this is a lot better than a lot of other, you know, Windows, you know, laptops that are out there. You know, there's no doubt about that. But we always want to have Apple listening to us, all right? And they never listened to us before. They always took years and years and years. But I think lately they're starting to listen a little bit more just a little bit so everyone just tell me what you want post in the comments we'll wrap this one up and we'll see you in the next one peace